<laughs> the Game of, Th oh. Game of Thrones music box that I got. I said I'd include it in a, one of the videos. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Video Juice. My name is Craig and we are here with the final ever episode of Game of Thrones. Last time on Game of Thrones we had Danny wipe King's Landing off the map. It's pretty much it. We had Danny's uh, assault on King's Landing. Uh, it was very one-sided. She decimated the Scorpions. She decimated the army. She made them surrender and then she wanted it to instill some fear in the Seven Kingdoms so she decimated King's Landing and killed probably most of the people that are that were living there. Um, we got a few big characters. Oh, we got Clegane Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for Clegane Bowl for a long time. Everybody has. Um, we had Clegane Bowl. We had Kyburn die. We had the Hound of the Mountain die. We had Cersei and Jaime die via brick or bricks. <laughs> we had the Golden Company die. They got wiped out without doing a fucking thing. They literally just got destroyed. Um, and then their leader, Strickland, I think his name was, um, was speared in the back by Grey Worm. That's the gist. I'm going to move on. I'm thinking, I'm trying, I'm trying to think about who's going to, I feel like Daddy's going to die. I've been saying this since, I, I only started reacting during season seven, I think. Was it seven? Seven or six. But since I've been reacting, I've been saying in my videos that I feel like Danny is not going to make it out. I feel like she's going to die. I've always felt like that. Um, I, I was obviously especially... It's more of a chance now, considering everything that happened last episode. Um, I've, try, I've been trying to think in the week who could kill her. I've been thinking John, and I've been thinking Arya. I don't know if they'd give another big kill to Arya like that. I don't know. I've also been, been thinking John because of how close they are and everything, and he would be able to get close to her. And then I've been thinking, fuck, what about Drogon? How are they going to get rid of Drogon? Could have Bran warg him and get rid of him for a little while and then kill Danny, you know? Yeah, I've been going over all this shit in my head all week. <laughs> it's just, I've been going in circles with a lot of stuff, but um, I said I'd ramp, I'd just ramp off all that. I also have seen all the hate that the last episode has been getting. Um, I didn't expect it to get as much hate as it has. It's understandable for a show like this, and I understand that people have problems with it. You're not going to please everyone. And I understand a lot of the complaints. Danny's, like this whole season, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying this season. It's had a lot of problems. It's had problems. It's had pacing issues. It's had... I'm 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 okay with the Danny thing. It definitely could have been fleshed out more. They could have they could have made the lead up more rewarding and more earned or uh say not earned. They could have made like the, the reveal earned. But I feel like they've they've had they've had stuff they've had her show signs of ruthlessness ruthlessness and madness throughout the show and she's always had her advisors advisors and stuff to talk her down and she's always um like she's always wanted to be worshipped and she always had Jorah and Missandei there and then later on in the newer seasons she's had like John and Tyrion and she has no Missandei now, she has no Jorah now, she has no, like John turned her down and betrayed her in her eyes, she has Tyrion betrayed her in her eyes and she even said when he rejected her she said something like fear it is or let it be fear or something like that and I feel like that's what she did, you know, like how else is she going to claim the seven kingdoms and keep them with all of this other stuff going on with John and 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 um and everything and I, I feel like her just doing that I understand people it was drastic but how do you instill fear in the seven kingdoms you send a message you say you fucking <laughs> you uh follow me or I'm gonna wipe you off the map like King's Landing like King's Landing I'm gonna make you not exist anymore um but as I said look I enjoyed it. Some people enjoyed it. A lot of people didn't. I understand. Um, they could have like the, a ten episode season would have would have worked. I don't know why the show showrunners did not do it. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. There was definitely more story that could have been told. Not more story, but there's definitely this story could have been stretched out and fleshed out. So we got one question for the Q and A uh, from Melissa. She said, "If Drogon dies in the final episode, and I really hope he doesn't, how do you think he'll be killed slash die?" Honestly, I don't know if they have the capabilities to kill Drogon now. I think the capabilities to kill Drogon was the, the Scorpions, and I don't think... like We know there's none of them left. I don't know if they can kill him now. Um, I feel like if they're going to get rid of him, or get him out of the picture, even for a little amount of time, or a small amount of time, they could use Bran and warg into him. That would be my guess. I don't... Because I, I, I honestly don't think they could kill him now. 
How could they do it? Um, no, I don't think so. I think if they're going to have to get him out of the picture and and distract him, or do so, oh, where's my phone? Do something with him. Um, I feel like it could be Bran. Uh, he could warg him. Um, if he could warg him, like I'm assuming he could warg him because he can warg humans, and apparently that's really hard to do. Um, and a dragon is intelligent, but it's still still a dragon. It's just an animal. So that would be my. I think he might get warged if they need to get rid of him for a while. Thank you for the question. <laughs> so if anyone else wants to participate in the Q and A for this episode, tell me what you think. Uh, wrap off your thoughts. Ask me some questions. Uh, tweet at us hashtag GOTQA. After, because th this is the last episode. But if I get a few questions, I will do a follow up video with the questions and answers, and maybe give a few extra thoughts on it after I leave the episode digest a bit. Plus, I'm definitely going to miss stuff. I always miss stuff. I forget to talk about stuff and leave stuff out. So, uh, I'll probably do a follow up video. So, throw me your questions. As for who's going to sit on the throne, I feel like I should do a uh, who's going to sit on the throne theory. I've been thinking about this again all week, and I've been thinking about this for the whole season. And my my theories about the whole season, my theories that I've been thinking about throughout the whole season are still kind of in play, there's still um, possibilities. First off, I was thinking Sansa, because of her character story, or her story in the in the, the show, and I feel like her becoming queen would have been full circle, but my second theory seems a little bit more likely now. And that was um, abolishing the Seven Kingdoms, abolishing the one ruler for the Seven Kingdoms thing. So I was thinking like John, or the Targaryens, Aegon the Conqueror was the one that united the Seven Kingdoms, brought them under one rule. And John being the true heir, I'm thinking like if Danny gets knocked out of the picture and John steps up, he could abolish it and put, he could tell people each kingdom have their own ruler and um, just abolish the one ruler thing. Because most of the most of the wars in Game of Thrones, most of the stuff we've seen and most of the wars have been because of the one ruler thing. It's always been a, a, about that. So why not abolish it? A Targaryen brought them together. A Targaryen can bring them apart. Um, and then we can have Sansa going off and rule in the north. We could have Bran in the Godswood. John could go up north with uh, with Tormund and Ghost. It'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. That's my theory. Uh, either that or Sansa. But I'd, like, there's no throne anymore. There's no capital. King's Landing is gone. So I don't really feel like there's going to be a one ruler thing. If there is, I'm going to go Sansa. But if not, I'm going to say um, I'm going to say Br uh, John will abolish the one ruler thing. So that's pretty much it. Last ever episode of Game of Thrones. I'm very excited. Very sad, obviously. It's a great show. Had to come to an end eventually. Um, yeah. Let's check it out. <sighs> gonna miss that intro. I'm <laughs> gonna miss that intro. Kill all who follow Cersei Lannister. These are free men. They chose to fight for her. Easy. Oh. Easy. Easy. Oh, God damn. I was wrong about them not finding the bodies anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of Dothraki left. <laughs> and Unsullied. There's a lot of Unsullied left. <laughs> that was a cool shot. Dario Valerio Valeriat! Ooh. Master of War. Freed the people of King's Landing! Fuck off! She fucking killed everyone. <laughs> Who did she free? Ooh. You freed your brother. She knows. You committed treason. Oh fuck. I freed my brother. Oh. Oh ho ho ho, he's dead. Fuck.
Oh, nice. That was a cool shot. Now Varus's ashes can tell my ashes. See? I told you. <laughs> oh. Love is more powerful than reason. We all know that. Look at my brother. <laughs> yeah. Winter has arrived in King's Landing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was fucking cool. <laughs> oh, shit. It's the House of the Undying prophecy. I suppose it was snow then. I thought it was ash. I suppose it's a bit of both. <laughs> How do you know it'll be good? Because I know what is good. And so do you. I know. You do. You do. You've always known. They don't get to choose. <laughs> be with me. <laughs> they don't get to choose. You are my queen. No, and always. Did his hand go back? I fucking knew it. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah, he actually did it. Fuck! How are they gonna? Deal with this. Drogon knows. Get, get out of there, John. <laughs> oh, poor Drogon. Oh, nice. Burn the throne, melt that shit. Oh, I thought he was gonna melt the fucking throne. Oh! He fucking is! <laughs> oh! He's just taken off. <laughs> is that. Could be the end of Drogon. <laughs> what the fuck? Say another word about killing my brother and I'll cut your throat. Well, please. <laughs> You're the most powerful people in Westeros. Choose one. Oh. Is that Edmure? What? <laughs> What did he pop up from? And I like to think my experience has led to some small skill in statecraft and okay. understand. Sit down. Please sit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sit your ass down. Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to. Oh. Everyone. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should give the dogs a vote as well. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Oh, is he going to say Bran? Stop it. No <laughs> enemy can defeat it. Would Bran be a good ruler, though? And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities? From this day until your last day. Why do you think I came all this way? <laughs> he knew. Hi. Brian gets it. Hi. Hi. I'm not sure I get a vote, <clears throat> but I. <laughs> remain an independent kingdom as it was for thousands of years <clears throat> it 
Sansa still gets to rule. All hail Bran the Broken. First of his name, King of the Andals and the First Men. Lord of the Six Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm. You will be my hand. Oh, what? Who, oh, your grace, I don't want it. And I don't want to be king. <laughs> I don't deserve it. He's made many terrible mistakes. He's going to spend the rest of his life fixing them. <laughs> so our new king has chosen to send you to the Night's Watch. What? I still Night's Watch. I'm not going back north. Where are you going? What's west of Westeros? I don't know. No one knows. It's where all the maps stop. She's gonna That's go. Where I'm going. She's gonna go find out. Makes sense. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. You were exactly where you were supposed to be. Ah. He always wanted more written about him. Oh, Bron! Did he get that castle? What's this? A song of ice and fire. Archmaster Ebro's history of the wars following the death of King Robert. <laughs> Helped him with the title. Sir Podrick. <laughs> or soon there won't be no more coin. Anymore. You master of grammar now too. Grandmaster. <laughs> it is my theory based on the years. I once brought a jackass and a honeycomb into a brothel. Oh, come on. <laughs> God damn it. Torment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we finally got that rub. Well, that's that. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't really know where to start. As far as an ending goes, it tied it up. It tied it up a little bit better than I expected. Um, I um, I was fine. I, I, it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, I had a few small problems with it, just with certain characters and stuff, which I'll get into in a little bit. But overall, I feel like I feel like they did a good job of tying stuff up. It went a little bit like how I thought it was going to. Uh, kind of, kind of. Um, my fucking abolished the uh, one ruler thing was completely gone. <clears throat> I still think Zoidberg would have been. The better choice. <laughs> I feel like out of out of all the episodes this season, like I've enjoyed all the episodes this season. Um, I have small problems with most of them. I feel like this one is the one that feels the most rushed. You know, I feel like this episode could have easily been two episodes, maybe even three. But I, I still, I still think it was a, a fine ending. You know, I feel like all the characters got good moments. I feel like the acting was phenomenal. Uh, the acting was was really really good. The effects were obviously good. F effects were always good. Uh, I just I just feel like it was. I feel like all the, all the characters got good closure. And we got we got some uh, characters I didn't expect to see again, and some that I didn't expect to see at all, like the the new Dornish prince, Yara coming back, Brienne and all them. I didn't expect to see them again. And if we uh, if we did, I expected it to be like a quick glimpse as they were going over at the ends, showing what people are doing. But uh, I liked seeing them back again. I suppose I'm just going to start the start. 
seems like the better thing to do. I will start with this. Where the fuck are all these Dothraki and Unsullied coming from? She had tons of Unsullied in this episode, you know? And, it, like, are they multiplying? Are they <laughs> are they cloning them? Uh, and the Dothraki, there was shitloads of them again here. Like, where, where the fuck are they coming from? That was, um, I just thought I'd mention that. Because when I saw them, I was like, where did these come from? I liked all the start of the episode. The start of the episode was really good. I liked the, the aftermath of, the, aftermath of, um, of the, uh, the decimation of King's Landing. And seeing Tyrion walk through the streets. And it, it just, it was so grim. I liked all that. I really liked the shot of Danny walking and Drogon stretching out his wings. That was very, very cool. But I liked her speech um, to, uh, to the Dothraki and the Unsullied. She really, Amelia Clark really sold it. She was she was great all this episode. She really um her acting was was really really good. I found it very funny when Danny was talking about I think it was Danny talking about it, um saying that she was going to free everyone like she freed the people of King's Landing. What? <laughs> what? She freed the people of King's Landing? What? Freed them of life? Fuck off. That was uh, that was ridiculous. <laughs> I got I got a good laugh off of that. Just a shot of Drogon under the snow or ash or whatever it was. I'm pretty sure it was snow. Um, when John was walking towards, was it Danny he was walking towards? I think it was the shot when he was walking towards Danny. When he was walking, and then it was like it was like something out of a out of a fucking video game with Drogon coming up. Uh, that was very very cool. It was really well done. But I kind of skipped over John and Tyrion's talk. Um, down. When Tyrion got uh, captured was really good as well. I full on expected Tyrion to die this episode. I expected him to die early. Because um, I didn't expect Danny to die early. I didn't expect her to die as early as she did. So that was a bit of a surprise. The second... Actually, I'll get to that in a minute. The, the House of the Undying prophecy... Really hinted at her dying. Thinking about it now, right? Because I, I, I didn't expect them to actually show the House of the Undying prophecy. I thought... That whole room was destroyed. The throne room. I thought that was fucked. I thought it was gone. Um, so when she started, when she stepped in there, I thought it was really cool that they're actually doing this. And then she, like in the House of the Undying prophecy, she was walking through that. And then afterwards, she walked to Drogo and her baby, and they're dead. So it was kind of hinting that she was going to die after that. And the fact that she didn't sit on the throne, I was waiting for her to sit on the throne, and she didn't. And then John walked in, and I was like fuck in my head I was like she's she's gone and then the second they start kissing you could you could see John's hand kind of going back I was like yeah yeah, yeah it's happening it's happening and she died fast <laughs> she, she was like dead um she didn't even get the last word out mm -hmm. I'm okay with the way all that went down like I feel like the first half of this episode was really good the first half was the, the least rushed or up until um up until the the council kind of thing, and oh no, actually before we get there, Drogon's reaction to Danny being dead got me. Him like hit, hitting her with her no with his nose, uh, and just unleashing fucking anger on the Iron Throne and melting that shit. That was a thing that I was talking about. I talked about it. I think I talked about it in my season seven reactions. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. But I remember talking about the fact that there might not be a throne left at the end of it. I thought, I theorized that someone on Drogon would melt the throne. I thought it was going to be Danny, um, But it's cool that it was actually Drogon that melted it anyway. Also, what happened to Drogon? He just flew off. We don't know what he did with our body. Yeah. Interesting. They're obviously, well, they were still looking for him. He never came back. And Bran was like, I can get him. There was obviously a decent time jump when they went to the council thing and Tyrion was walking out. His beard was a lot bigger. Um, this is just before, just before King's, La before we could see shots of King's Landing and King's Landing was like a little bit rebuilt, um, and there was people going around. So it, there must've been a decent time jump for the, uh, for the, the council thing. The council thing was, it, it was I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing those characters back again. The way all that went down was really weird. It was weird. Like... As I said, I, I liked all those characters being there. I liked, I, I liked most of it, but like the Unsullied, or uh, Grey Worm was basically telling Tyrion to shut up, and then Tyrion just came out and, as a prisoner, just told everyone what to do. 
and recommended Bran be the king. Like, I don't understand why they listened to him in that moment. Um, it was just a bit weird. Why would they? And they were like, like they, they wanted justice. And they wanted justice on Tyrion and John, but they didn't get justice for anyone. They only like John was <laughs> or uh, Tyrion was was promoted and named hand of the hand of the king, and then John is, has to take the black again. They didn't get any justice. Uh, and then uh, who 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 was it? Was it Davos offered them the reach so that they could create a house? How are they going to do that when they got no dicks? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was weird. That was that was that was that was weird. That was like. Yeah, I don't know. That was that was the weirdest thing I thought about that whole scene. Um, Robin looked very different. He seems to have come into his own a little bit, with with or with the time that has passed. Uh, Ed Muir, I couldn't believe that Ed Muir was there. <laughs> I was like, what the, is that Ed Muir? Um, good to see him again. He kind of got shit all over again. He has not had a good time on this show, but hey, could be worse. Could be dead. <laughs> so at least he made it through. Yeah, I like. I like that Tyrion became hand again. I like that he's not dead. He. Like, under normal circumstances, he was a very good hand. He was, when he stepped in, instead of Tywin, he was a very good hand. He did the job well. Obviously, with Danny, it, the situation is very, very different when he was at the hand with Danny because they were invaders. They were trying to take the throne. They weren't um, operating the throne, basically. So, I feel like he'll be, I think, I think he'll be a good choice. I was a little bit weirded out. Not weirded out. I was a little bit confused about why they chose Bran at the start. I still kind of am. I get the actually. I I have I have mad stuff about Bran as well here, right? I'm still a bit weirded out by why they picked Bran. I like I don't know. I don't I don't know if he's a really good choice. Like maybe he is. I don't know. But so Bran said on the show before. I can't remember what season about being Lord of Winterfell. And he's like, I can't be Lord of Winterfell. I'm the Tree Eyed Raven. Um. But then he just becomes king anyway. <laughs> he can definitely see the future then, right? Like, we've never got full-on confirmation that he can see the future. We've got little hints. Like him giving the dagger to Arya to kill the Night King. That was kind of a hint. But we did, like, this time we got definitive proof. He was like, why do you think I'm here? You know, he, he knew he was going to become king. Um, so that means he knew that King's Landing was going to get burned to the ground by Danny with all those civilians in it, right? Like, does, does this say that... I know we've heard about kind of time in the show before with the ink being dry and everything. Like, can is there definitively no way to change the future? Because all Bran would have had to do is tell someone about Danny burning King's Landing, and then that would have altered the future. But yeah, I don't know. Um, like Bran knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to happen. <laughs> He knew he was becoming king and he knew how he was going to become king. He knew all the shit that was going to happen beforehand. And he knew all these innocents were going to die. That shit is dark. <laughs> um, I'm actually like... Ban is a weird choice. I'm oddly okay with it. But I just... Like he has no... I, I like I like their I like their decision on how to elect a new king. The fact that they 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 voted. I like that. I like it's not just the fucking the the bloodline or whatever. I like that. Um, I just Bran is a weird choice. I suppose he has he he has the sight. That's a bonus. He can see stuff. He can. Um, he doesn't have a lot of want himself. So. Mm. Like he wouldn't have a lot of distractions. I like uh, I like I liked that Brienne wrote in the wrote in the book uh, for Jamie and added more to his thing, added more to his um his history. That was a nice little touch. So I like that her and Pod, uh, Brienne and Pod are uh, part of the King's Guard now. That's a nice touch. I thought she was sworn to serve Sansa. So I don't I, I don't I, I, like even a quick scene to explain why she's down there instead of looking after Sansa would have been nice because it seems a bit weird that she's just in King's Landing and the King's there now instead of fulfilling her oath to Sansa. Uh, and if they broke that if 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 she was released of her oath then why not show it? Why not do a quick fucking scene showing it? That's it. That's what I mean with this episode feeling the most rushed. Rushed. There's just small little things like that that don't make sense. Like Bronn. 
Why is Bran the master of coin? That's fucking ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. His his scene in episode four doesn't make sense to me with how this season, with how the, 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 the season ended. Why do that? Why why have that scene thrown in there? That doesn't make sense. Why have him so aggressive and everything? And have him be the master of coin, that's an awful decision. He's always only cared about money. And like he, he has no loyalties. He's only cared about fucking women and himself and and even at the end, he's like fixed the brothels instead of giving uh, uh, Davos ships. And it's like, I feel like that was an awful decision. And I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I it's probably Tyrion fucking being like, "Hey, Lannister always pays his debts." Don't fucking say it. <laughs> but I don't get that decision. I don't get. I didn't get like. I was hoping something more would come of his uh, interaction in season four with Tyrion and Jaime. Because it was so aggressive, and I feel like it was a bit out of character. Because he's had, he's shown friendship towards those two people. He sh like they've been through a lot as well. Granted, I know they promised him a lot of stuff and that, but it, it, they delivered on some. And I just feel like it came a little bit out of nowhere. And I thought we were going to get more on that, but it seems like they just glossed over that. That's another thing. Like they could have delved into that more and had an interaction with him before we got the end interaction. Um, but we didn't and it just seems a bit weird seems a bit it's just a little bit rushed and we we were so close to getting that joke the, the jackass and the honeycomb joke ah oh, those bastards they knew they knew oh whatever whatever we didn't want to hear it anyway we didn't want to hear it anyway and then we have <laughs> the night's watch and john john getting sent sent to the night's watch like why is the night's watch why does the night's watch uh, excuse me why does the Night's Watch still exist? They tried to they tried to explain it in the episode with a with that quick little line about oh we need somewhere for bastards and and something else. It's like that's that doesn't make sense. The Night's Watch was created to stop the fucking uh, the the White Walkers, right? And eventually it, it turned into like the a war against the Wildlings and everything, but that's gone now. It, they, they, their primary function was to stop the, the 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 White Walkers and to keep them out. But there's a hole in the wall. And the White Walkers don't exist anymore. Why does the Night's Watch exist? They, I know they like they. they but I know they probably need somewhere just to send fucking uh, degenerates and fucking criminals and shit that they don't want to execute. But I just don't see the point. And I like what happened at the end. I'm assuming that John has left the Night's Watch and is going to live with the Wildlings, possibly as King Beyond the Wall. That'd be pretty cool. But obviously, we don't know. That's just me speculating and me wanting that more than anything. He could be the new. Uh, he could be the new Mance Raider, you know. Um, he could be the leader of the Wildlings. That'd be cool. I had, I theorized at the start of the episode that if he lived, he could have went north and hung out with um with with Tormund and and Ghost. So I'm glad that that happened. It makes sense. Tormund was always saying try to show that he's he he wants. That's what he wants. He wants to be he wants to be free and stuff. So. I like that. It was a nice little touch for his character. And we finally got him petting ghosts. We finally got that rub. The rub that we need. Uh, that was nice. I'm glad that we got to see Ghost again. And Torment again. I, I, Torment was someone I didn't expect to see again. Like even if we went north. Um, but I'm glad we got to see both of them. And we got our rub. So that was good. I don't have a whole lot more. Just like the... With how the, the Starks ended up. The Starks kind of... The Starks came out on top in this, in this show. I feel like... Like we have Sansa ruling the north. Oh, actually, before I get there, Sansa in that moment with the council thing, saying, "Oh, the north wants to be free. They're not gonna. They're not gonna follow a, a ruler anymore." That was I, I, that was ridiculous. That whole moment was just ridiculous. Because first of all, Bran is a Stark. You're telling me they're not gonna follow a Stark on the throne? I find that absolutely ridiculous. I know that they probably want an independent north, but with a Stark on the throne, I, I find that them not following it ridiculous. Second of all, why would the rest of the kingdoms not be like, uh, hang on a minute, she's allowed out, but we have to fucking follow this ruler? <laughs> why would they all not just be like, let's get the fuck out of here? Especially like, like you have the likes of Dorne and the Iron Islands. Like Dorne, I think, was the last kingdom to join. And then the Iron Islands, like, Yara had had been promised by Danny that she would be allowed to rule independently rule the Iron Islands independently once she took the throne in return for her ships and her fleet like she's just gonna sit there and leave Sansa take the north and be independent and she's gonna sit there and take it fuck that that's I that 
that was the most ridiculous thing in the episode for me. <laughs> Hands down. Um, but, uh, whatever. Yeah, so, like, we have Sansa ruling the north. We have Arya off fucking exploring. We have Jon, maybe, king of the north. And then we have, uh, we have uh, Bran on the throne, king of the six kingdoms. So, Starks kind of came up on top, out, out on top on this show. The only thing I didn't like about the way all the Starks ended up is they kind of forgot the thing that they learned. Was it last season or the season before with the pack? The, the what was it? The, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. They all just separated and went off on their own. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on the episode. Um, I like where I like the, like where Arya ended up as well, just going off exploring. And I always said that Sansa was going to be a good ruler, so her ruling the North is um, good. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, at the season as a whole, I talked about it last episode. I talked about it again. At the start of this episode in the recap, I've enjoyed it overall. Like even this episode, I've had a lot of I had a lot of small problems with this episode. I feel like they they capped the season or capped the show as well as they could with what they've done. They should have done a ten episode season. They should have done a ten like with, with the extra length of the episodes. You're talking about eight or nine episodes in length of the season already. So another one like what what would that have done? Um, I didn't really feel the like how rushed the season was as much as other people. I know people have been complaining about it all season. I don't. I didn't feel it that much. This was the only episode where I really felt it. I didn't mind it. I liked the first two episodes. I liked episode three, the long night. I really enjoyed the long night. Episode four was was decent as well. Five I enjoyed. Um, I had small problems again, like Jamie's character development being thrown out the window. But I, like overall, I enjoyed it. They definitely could have. They could have extended it even more so just for this episode this episode was felt the most rushed because there was just so much packed in there was so much packed in into this episode but overall i enjoyed it this is an it's been it has been an incredible show it's been an incredible journey it's sad to see it go it's crazy to think that a fantasy show could become so mainstream like this and it's cool because of the fact that it did because it shows that that a show like this can exist Hopefully we get some more. Like hopefully the spin-offs are going to be good. Like I know there's one in production at the moment. I think the uh, the code or not code name, but like the working title for it at the moment is Blood Moon, uh, set like four or five thousand years before this, about the children of the forest. That would be pretty cool if 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 it takes off and gets going. Like I know one of these spin-offs already got axed. So I think they 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 gave like four or five different people or peoples, um, the the permission or whatever to, to to write something and come back at them so they're obviously just trying to see what comes back and see what works i think there's a lot of opportunity within this universe for good spin for good spin-offs set way way before or after not even after but way way before this in different time periods and stuff so there is a lot of opportunity there so i don't have anything else that's pretty much it last ever video for game of thrones well maybe not second last if in case give me some uh questions we're going to do a little q a and stuff if you have any questions or thoughts or anything send them to me with the hashtag gotqa on twitter um or even if you wanted to in the comments put hashtag gotqa and i will take them as well and i might do i'll do like if i get enough i'll do a video either next week or the week after um just like another say talking video about my thoughts like say may after giving it a week or two and i'll probably watch it again but then answering the questions it'll be mostly a q a um a video but I can give extra thoughts and stuff on it after leaving it uh, digest a bit, you know. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching all of my Game of Thrones reactions. I only started reacting recently, so I only got to re actually react to season 7 and 8. I would have loved to have done more, but I wasn't reacting at the time, so I couldn't. And I had already watched them, so... <laughs> You can like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. We do other reactions and stuff. We're currently doing Supernatural and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the moment. They're my two mains at the moment. I just don't have a lot of time, so I'm trying to keep it to one or two a week. Yeah, so check them out. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments below. We have some social media links and a website address down below in the description. You can check them out as well. And we will see you next time. Later. So we can ride away upon a tumbling
away 